Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today I'm gonna to be showing you a really simple effect that has a lot of different use cases. So a while back, I made a keyboard that my dog could edit a video with, and there was one shot where my dog approaches the water and looks off into the sunset distance, except that's not the original shot. This is the original shot. It was impossible to get him to do that action without me actually guiding him through the process, but this doesn't really have the same emotional impact as this. So I removed myself from the shot, and I'm gonna show you how to actually achieve this effect inside of Premiere Pro. Then I'm gonna show you some of the other practical use cases that you can use this effect for. But first, you wanna make sure that your footage is actually set up in a way that you can actually use it for this effect at all. The main thing that you're watching out for is if you have multiple subjects in the same shot, there needs to be some distance between them at all times. They can't cross over each other. But if you have no other choice, you need to make sure that the object that you want to remain visible is the one in front, and the object you want to remove is the one behind. The other piece is that it's best if your background is not moving, but you might notice that my background is moving. There's waves, but there's a key exception. This is a background element that moves in a random chaotic way. If you have a background where there's predictable and specific motion, like a bunch of people moving around, that can each individually be identified, then it would be a lot harder to pull off. So now that you know that your footage is actually in a place where you can use it for this effect, let's dive into Premiere Pro and show you what we're actually gonna be doing. The basic idea of what we're creating is this, two identical scenes stacked on top of each other, except with a stencil cut out of the top one and the bottom one moved in time just a little bit. And when you place it all back together, you see a perfect scene just without your subject. To pull this off in Premiere, set up your footage so that it's the length that you want it to last for for your scene. Now let's highlight it and go up to effect controls and click on either the ellipse or rectangle tool, depending on what fits your shape better. You'll find this under the opacity section. You can also create your own custom mask shape by using the pen tool. Stretch your mask over top of the object that you wanna remove and make sure that it completely covers them. And if you wanted more context for what you're seeing, you can go up to this FX symbol beside opacity and turn it off. Make sure that your mask completely encloses all parts of your subject and then feather the mask, making sure that your subject is still contained within this inner circle. Turn FX back on and this is what you should see, a black screen except for what's inside of your mask. Now we have to make sure that the mask follows our subject for the whole scene. You'll need to click on the stopwatch here beside mask path and then move forward or backward in time, moving the mask to where it would be over your subject at this point in time. If you have a really simple motion in your shot, you might be able to just go about 10 to 20 frames forward and then move the mask over top of your subject just that one time. And your mask will follow that path at all points in time in between those two keyframes. And if along the way you need to make some adjustments, you can just move it back over top where it doesn't quite fit. Lastly, go up to your mask and click invert. And now your mask looks like this, a nice cutout of your subject. We're almost home free now. Let's take this entire layer and duplicate it by holding Alt or Option and clicking and dragging it up a layer. If you hold Shift as well, you're gonna lock it in time while moving that layer so that it doesn't accidentally slip forwards or backwards. Now highlight the bottom layer and delete the mask from this layer. And what you should be left with is nothing different, but here's the magic. Move your bottom layer forwards or backwards in time with the slip tool, shortcut key Y. And depending on your footage, you'll slip it either forwards or backwards to have an empty portion of your background layer showing through. Nice. And if you're still finding that you're having trouble, you can also use a slightly different method by having a clean plate of a background and then masking out the one part that you want to keep instead. The process is the same, except instead of making a hole to see through to an empty back layer, you're making a small cutout to stick over top of a clean plate. Play around and see which method works best for your situation. And guys, that's literally how easy it is to pull off this effect for yourself. But here's the thing, you don't actually need a dog in order to actually use this. I'm gonna show you a couple different situations where you can take advantage of this effect for yourself. And the first one is pretty simple. Let's say you had a shot where you wanted to get some nice, crisp, clean audio, but you didn't have a lav mic and you didn't want a big microphone like this visible in your shot. So what do you do? You record your scene as you normally would with the microphone in plain view, just making sure that you're not crossing your hand or body part over top of where it is. Then once you're done recording, keep the camera rolling and just push the microphone out of the way and get a clean plate of where this microphone would be. And this is the final result, a great looking shot with nice crisp clean audio and no microphone in the way distracting your audience. And as long as you're making sure that you don't wave your hand or body part in front of where the microphone would be, the shot's gonna come across as flawless. You can also use this method to clean up your set if you like. I accidentally pulled the paint off the wall here when moving some stuff around and it looks gross. So to fix it, do exactly the same method but instead of moving the footage forward and backwards in time, move it back and forth in its position 
to cover the hole with other portions of the wall that blend into the empty space. And of course, there's everybody's favorite use. This is just the reverse of how to get a cloning effect. Instead of removing your subject from the top layer, just use this layer as your base. Then stack on top of that footage of you in a different position without the camera having moved at all. Make a mask around this subject and you have the identical scene with just you in different positions. And you've officially got a double of yourself. I'm convinced that masking is one of the most powerful tools in video editing that not nearly enough people are utilizing. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite application of masking is. And speaking of comments, we're gonna be choosing our lucky winner for our comment giveaway. You might know that in our last video, we celebrated hitting 250,000 subscribers. And as a result, one lucky commenter is gonna be getting a one year free subscription to Motion Array. So let's choose that lucky winner right now. Drum roll please, as the winner is Emika. So congratulations to you. I'm gonna be reaching out to you to get you set up with that one year free subscription. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.